We're going to look at the dual concern model of conflict styles and tactics to better understand how conflicts occur in organizations and in families and in every aspect of life. So here we have a graph that is a, the basic description of the dual concern model. So dual concern means that there's two sets of concerns that we're concerned about. The first is this vertical axis going up and down. On the top half of the grid, there's a high concern for one's own interests. These are the things that um, matter to me, and I can be very concerned about them, or down below, I can have low concern for my own interests. I can say, yeah, I'd like that, but that's not very important. Or I can say, yeah, that's important to me, and I, and I really want to make sure I get it. I can have a high concern for my own, own interests, or a low concern for my own interests. And then we've also got on the vertical axis, high concern for others' interests and low concern for others' interests. So the vertical axis was concerned about my own interest. The horizontal axis has to do with how concerned I am for the interests and concerns of the other person. And again, that can be high or low. Over on the uh, uh, right side, there's a high concern for others' interest. Over on the left side, is a low concern for others' interest. I might be concerned about the other's person, or I might not be. Now, these two dimensions create four axes that describe the type of uh, conflict style or that we have in a, a given uh, context or how we habitually act. So let's, let's start off down with the uh, uh, low concern for others' interest and low concern for my own interest. If I don't think what they want is important, and I don't think what I want is important, it's just not worth it. We're going to avoid talking about it. So that would be avoidance. Now, um, uh, the, the quadrant above that, if I'm really concerned about my own interest, but I don't really care what the other person wants, I'm going to be using a style known as competition or forcing. I want what I want, I'm going to get it, and I don't care what you want. Now that's typically when we think of a conflict, that's what's happening. Is somebody fighting for their own interests without being uh, concerned about their the other person's interests. But that's only one way of dealing with a, a conflict. The opposite way is, oh, I don't care what I want, but um, I'll be very concerned about what you want, so I will accommodate you. I will give in to you. I will give you what you want. So that's what the quadrant on the lower right is, is a high concern for others' interests, a low concern for my own interests, which, which leads to accommodation. Now that forcing and accommodation, a lot of times you have one person who's forcing, one person who's accommodating, and it makes it fairly stable, but not a very satisfactory situation for the person who's always accommodating. Now the fourth quadrant is cooperation, and that's where I'm concerned about what I want. I think what I want is important, but I also think what you want is important. And this cooperation is where you say, let's try to find some solution that responds to everybody's interests, that takes into consideration everybody's concern, because they're both important, and so we're going to try to figure out something that will satisfy both of us. So that's the quadrant called cooperation, and it turns out that this cooperation quadrant is a, a quadrant that leads the, to the best uh, outcomes for organizations and teams and even individuals within organizations. If people can uh, cooperate rather than going into this forcing and accommodation mode, um, far more concerns are met and the organization can run more efficiently because all the problems are getting addressed in a constructive way. So this coordination, this cooperation quadrant is super important to uh, for uh, organizations because it's where people don't get hurt, but problems get solved. Now, so this is the dual concern model, the two sets of concerns for conflict styles and tactics. Now, what do I mean by conflict style? 
Conflict style is our preferred or most used quadrant. We have a tendency to prefer one of these four quadrants. Maybe we're really avoidant. Maybe we're uh, really uh, com uh, competitive and we're using forcing a lot. Maybe we just, just um, want to serve and give in and help people so we're always accommodating. Or maybe we say, yeah, it's worth the effort, let's cooperate. So that would be our conflict style. And a conflict tactic is a given, a, is a, what we choose to do in a given conflict. Sometimes you'll just say, you know, this really isn't worth it. I'll give in to what the other person wants. They really want uh, uh, light green walls in the uh, hallway. Doesn't matter to me. I'll let them choose light green walls for the hallway. Um, Sometimes things are such a hot button issue that you'll want to avoid them and you won't even bring them up and neither party will bring them up because um, it's probably not worth the negative emotion that would be generated. That would be avoidance. Um, other times things are worth fighting for. If um, uh, someone uh, wants to hurt my wife, I am going to use forcing on that person. Um, and But the most... Uh, um, uh, the useful uh, tactic, if possible, is cooperation, where you seek to respond to the needs, interests, and concerns of both parties. So that would be a conflict tactic, what we choose to do in a given conflict. Now, we've talked about conflict systems in the past, and the conflict systems relate to these uh, four quadrants. So if both parties want avoidance, um, that would be an avoidant system. If both parties tend to use cooperation, it would be a co collaborative system where people are cooperating. They're collaborating together. But if there's just one person that wants forcing, that forcing kind of trumps everything else. And that'll lead, yield a con, uh, an aggressive system, even if the other person wants to be cooperative or avoidant or accommodating. The, uh, the aggressive system kind of... Uh, uh, dominates when there's one person using uh, forcing. So we can't automatically get cooperation simply by deciding that we want to cooperate. We need to have both parties willing to uh, cooperate. And that means when we're in management systems, we need to not only model cooperation, we need to encourage cooperation and create conflict management systems that promote cooperation so that cooperation really will occur so that people don't get hurt as they do enforcing but that solutions can be can, but that solutions can be genuinely found to problems which is the goal of cooperation